Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HC. This is video 17, and today we're talking about the Mix module. So let's right-click the display port and hit preset, and underneath oscillator number one, let's skip one cell here, and let's select the third one, and let's go to Mix. Now we have four of these different modules, and the whole point of this thing is that it mixes two signals together. You can reduce stereo width, you can sum to mono. This mix knob is basically the crossfade between the input signal and the sidechain, which can be modulated, by the way, down here in the modulation matrix. We would go down here to none or really any one of these and drag the crosshair onto this here and kind of do the same thing like we would do in Hive. Now we have a pan knob here and it's dedicated modulation knob over here, which is also really nice. So let's say, for example, we have two oscillators and we want to mix those into one. So for this demonstration, we have oscillator number one, which is a saw wave. And for now, let's disable this mix here by double clicking. So let's put this saw wave to the left speaker by putting the pan to the left underneath the mixer tab. And let's get oscillator two in the lane two. And let's change this one to the right and mute the first lane. But instead of a saw wave, let's change this to a sine wave. So it's really obvious. So let's go to oscillator two down here, select the preset, go to sine tree. Now we have a sine wave and pan it again back to the right. Now let's bring this up about two octaves here. So it's kind of annoying, but it's easy to differentiate what's actually happening here. So just to recap, we have the sine wave on the right. And then if we unmute the left side for the first lane, we have the saw on our left. Okay, so we could really use two lanes and have that same type of effect and use the panning here. We could do that, but if we want to mix these two together, what we need to do is first mute this second lane because we're going to be mixing these down the first lane. So let's bring our first mix back here and then let's right click this mix and go to sidechain two. Now this menu is going to be important because if we look at this, this says same. So this basically says it's whatever lane this is on, it's going to take the same as the input. So if we're on same or if on input one, it's kind of the same thing. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now, the important part is the side chain. So the side chain is going to be on lane two, which is this oscillator here. And that's why this connection is happening. So now we essentially get the same thing. Now it's important to realize what's the input and what is the side chain, because this wasn't necessarily in the manual and it kind of took me a little bit to figure out. So if you're wondering this, hopefully this will clear things up for you. So let's go over here to the mix module here. So we have a pan mode here and we click this list and we have a couple things. We have balance left, right, pan left, right, balance right, left, pan right, left, and pan mono. So basically we look at balance and we look at panning. So balancing is basically attenuating one side of the signal, whereas panning is actually moving one side to the other. So balance, let's say you have a signal and it's a cool sound and the right channel is a little bit too loud. So that's something you would balance, right? Now, let's say you want to move maybe the right to the left speaker or the left to the right. That's where panning comes in. So those are the, that's the main difference between the two. So for example, let's go on pan for now. And this is what kind of tripped me out first. So we have this pan left, right, and we have our mix knob, right? We can crossfade between the input and the side chain. So if we're going to be using the pan and we turn this to the left, so now on the left-hand side, it works as, as expected, right? We hear a saw wave and we hear a sine wave in the left speaker. Now what's interesting is we turn this to the right. It doesn't necessarily work as expected. We still have the saw wave in our left and the sine wave in our right. In fact, moving this at all here on the right-hand side doesn't necessarily work. So this is the interesting part. What we need to do if we want to do the opposite of panning the signal all the way to our right side. This is where the input signal and the side chain comes into play. So let's unmute the second lane and mute the first one. Bring this mix to the second lane, right click this and select the input for two because we want oscillator two to be the input and the side chain is going to be one. So now we've kind of reversed the order. And if we play this here and turn it to the right, now we kind of get what we're expecting. The saw in the right and the sine wave in the right and nothing on the left. As we can see here on the meter, it's only the right side. So something to keep in mind. Now we can always sum things to mono. Now for this example, let's go to init preset again. We're just gonna use one oscillator here. Let's put this to maybe quad and let's make this pretty wide. And turn that down a little bit, it's kind of loud. So we obviously have a stereo signal here. And if we detune it, 
it kind of gives us a little bit more of a wider signal. So what we need to do is select the cell here again, and let's go to mix again. So now we can go to pan mono and we increase this to the right. And now it's straight in the center here. Now the cool part about this module here, so let's say you want to use some frequency modulation and you have a couple different oscillators, so you have one and two, and you are you want to use those two as the input to an FMO, for example. In that case, that's why you would want to do the mix module. So oscillator number one, you can have this as a saw, number two as maybe, like I said, a sine wave, something like that again as well. Have the mix module here and right click and set this to the side chain, mute this guy, and maybe you tune this. And you wanna use that signal as the input to an FMO, and in that sense, you can go to the FMO, and then FMO by input. And make some weird stuff like that. So thought I would mention that before we close this video out. So hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.